All right, we made it over here to uh, Lafayette, Indiana. We're at our top secret location. We're waiting to unload in the morning. I thought there'd be uh, another truck or two here, but there's not. All right, good morning. It's the Sunday after Thanksgiving. It's Sunday morning. Um, we spent Thanksgiving over in St. Louis and had some turkey at the TA truck stop. And then we drove over here. Uh, we are just north of Champaign on 57. I stopped here because I got good TV reception. And this little truck stop is actually the truck stop I was at right around Christmas last year where my truck, uh, the def light started to come on. And I went to the Kenworth dealer right down the road. Um, we're gonna make our way over to Oakwood, Illinois. Illinois, to the Love's truck stop. Uh, I'm gonna get a shower. And then from right there, we got about an hour. The place we're going to has overnight parking. So we're gonna make our way over there to get some overnight parking. Uh, so we can wake up our our appointment, this place has appointments, and our uh, delivery appointment is at 6 a.m., which means it's gonna be dark and cold. But uh, we'll get it unloaded, and then once we get unloaded, they actually, they're a little, they're a little slow unloading, so the early unload time is probably not that bad. Um, so once we get unloaded, then we're gonna head down towards Cincinnati. We're actually going to Florence, Kentucky to uh, uh, pick up insulation and take that back over to St. Louis. We got a little bit of a bounce from Lafayette down to Cincinnati area. But kind of knew that because of the holiday weekend of how things were going to go. Uh, so kind of figured that uh, I just went with what I knew and I knew I was going to get that load so I went ahead and took it. I'm waiting for traffic right now. It is quarter to eight central time. Traffic is probably going to be a little heavier than usual for a Sunday because everybody's trying to get home from Thanksgiving. I'm gonna go get a shower. I need a shower, freshen up, and then we'll make our way over to where we gotta go. But I don't know if you guys can see it, but the Kenworth dealer is over in that, right over there, and that's where we were. So, all right, uh, we'll get a little bit of road footage today. It's kind of a dreary, nasty, kind of day. Uh, they are talking for snow right now. It just kind of looks like it might be rain or freezing rain. Well, we'll get a little road footage and I'll talk to you when we get to the loves.
Linwood, Illinois. Uh, we've only been driving about uh, not even 45 minutes. Uh, the re one reason I stayed at that truck stop is because I could get TV reception. This place is kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I did get laundry done over near St. Louis. And what else did I have? Oh, I did laundry. I filled up the truck full of fuel and def. So we're in good shape for that for a while. Hussy, I haven't been doing much all weekend. I did paperwork, lots of paperwork. It's getting close to the end of the year, so I'm getting all my paperwork together. So I got that done. And just been watching TV. But we're gonna get a shower, get cleaned up, and then uh, make our way over to Lafayette. And it's kind of like you can see uh, wintry mix rain. I'm going to go over to the Loves. You saw the pilot right over there. But I'm going to go over to the Loves because it's newer and I think I have more shower credits at Loves than I do at uh, the pilot. Now the way the shower credits work, I don't know if I've covered this lately or not, but uh, the pilot loves, you buy 50 gallons of fuel, you get one shower credit. That doesn't mean if you buy 100 gallons, you get two shower credits. It just means if you buy more than 50 gallons, you get a shower credit. The TA of Tetro, you have to buy 60 gallons. You have to buy more than 60 gallons to get a shower credit. I get a lot of comments of why I don't fill my truck up every time I buy fuel. Uh, one of the main reasons is I don't need to ride around with 200 gallons of fuel in the truck. Uh, most of the stuff I do is kind of short. As long as I have about 100 to 150 gallons in the truck, that works out pretty good for me. Plus, if I end up somewhere that I know I'm going to load heavy, I'll, uh, I usually try to have less than a half a tank. In order for me to get 47,000 pounds on the trailer, I have to have less than a half a tank. Um, when I bought this truck, I thought this truck was going to be a little lighter than what it actually was. Come to find out, this truck weighs just about as much as the old Peterbilt with the generator and everything else that's hooked up to it. Let's see, we want to be lazy? Yeah, we'll be lazy. We'll be lazy since, oh, no, there's a truck tucks, tucked away in that hole. I was gonna back in that hole right there. Ah, we'll go down here. I was gonna be lazy because of the weather. We'll go down here and see if we can find a spot. My little temperature thing says it's 34 degrees outside. Here we go. We're gonna park on one of those right there on the end right there. All we gotta do is just pull straight up and back straight in. Buddy's coming. been running the generator a lot this weekend I did check the oil and I actually stopped at Walmart and bought my groceries for the week and I bought the oil and everything to change the oil in the generator but uh, I was hoping the weather would be a little bit nicer but it didn't happen so eventually sometime I need to change the oil in the generator think that's it. Nope. That's it. Alright, let me go get a shower and uh, we'll uh, head on over to Lafayette, Indiana. So I will talk to you in a bit. All right, I got my shower and bought some fruit cups. Oh, let me get in the door here. Hang on a second. 
Let me put my bag away. Hang on. Oh. All right. I got everything put away. Uh, got a shower. Got some breakfast. Got some fruit cups. And we got about an hour or so to go to get over to Lafayette, Indiana. But I'm, all right, let me clean my glasses, get everything going here, and uh, we'll take off. All right, I think we're ready to go. We got about an hour and a half, about an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes. We're, uh, we're gonna kinda go the long way, which we're on 74 right now. We're gonna run 74 all the way to Crawfordsville and then shoot up 231 up to uh, Lafayette. Uh, instead of, Google Maps wants to kind of zigzag diagonally from um, up through Indiana, but I found it's just easier, especially with a truck, to shoot up straight through 231 a little bit further. But other than that, not too much else exciting going on today. Got the lights on. Um, I had somebody ask me if I could talk about the Mercer's load board. But I can't show the load board on the video because that's against their policy. But I'll talk about how Mercer finds freight, how Katie finds freight for me. I find freight. Um, at Mercer you have what they call a coordinator slash dispatcher. Um, in my opinion though, a dispatcher is more of, hey, you're gonna load here, go there, pick up here, go there, pick up there, go there. Mercer, they have coordinator, and a coordinator just matches you to freight. The coordinator will ask you, where do you wanna go? What do you wanna do? How heavy do you wanna haul? What's your minimum per mile that you will haul? Um, stuff like that, how, how big of tarp jobs will you do? There's a lot of guys that don't do eight foot tarps. Uh, there's guys that just do four foot tarps. They take all that information, how far deadhead you want. And the coordinator takes all of that information and puts it in the computer and then calls you when you match the loads. And the longer you work with your coordinator, the more of a relationship you build with your coordinator. Your coordinator starts to understand how you like to run, uh, what you like to run. Um, there's guys, you know, they won't do loads that are less than, you know, a thousand miles. Um, you know, so there's all kinds of different uh, variables that can that you tell your coordinator, and they match you up. Now. Let's back up a little bit. Mercer has agents. And the agents that Mercer has across the United States in each different cities, they're just like us. They're independent contractors. Um, so they go out and they find the loads. They talk to businesses. Uh, some of those agents have uh, relationships with uh, what they call third-party logistics companies. Uh, some of your big companies, they will hire a company to handle everything. They come in and you know, hey, we'll take care of everything. Um, that's kind of what your mega carriers do. So it's kind of along the same lines as what a mega carrier, you know, JB Hunt, Swift, Snyder, all those guys, they come in and they say, don't worry about it. We got enough trucks and trailers and we'll drop, you know, a hundred trailers at your facility so you can preload them, you know, that kind of thing back at Mercer to the load board so I can look at the load board and if I see something I want to do I can I can accept it um, Katie has the ability she'd see if I match to something but she's like nah I don't think he'll do that she has you know I've given her the authority or however you want to say it to refuse loads for me so Katie does not call me on every load and that goes back to what I was saying, the longer you're there, the more relationship you build with, uh, with your coordinator, and they can, uh, you know, kind of uh, determine what you want to haul. They have a good idea 
of what you want to do. So that's kind of how the load board works. Now we don't work off of uh, like uh, your DAT load boards and uh, the, the, the other uh, mobile load boards that you see. We don't haul off of those. We just haul Mercer's freight uh, through the agent. And one of the main reasons for that is that Mercer knows they're going to get paid. They, they don't haul, they don't mess with brokers that they don't have a relationship with because they don't want to get left with the bill. They want to make sure they're getting paid in a timely manner, stuff like that. So I believe that's how it works. But uh, there's enough freight. You know, there is no there is no one company sitting on a big pile of freight. Um, you know, if it's slow at Mercer, it's slow everywhere. Um, you know, certain things, certain areas are always slow. You know, the uh, out west, the west coast is notoriously, even in the good times, is slow. Um, so when it's really slow, it's really slow out there. The rates are always never good. That's why you never see me go out west. Is uh, very, very rarely do I make a, a regular run out west. Uh, in my opinion, I've, I've found that I do a lot better just running a, kind of a 500 mile radius in Louisville. Uh, don't go south too much. But there's other guys, you know, they, they can make it work. The way I do it is not the absolute best way. There's a lot of other ways to do it. There's over 2,000 drivers at Mercer. And if you ask them how they do it, there's you're going to get 2,000 different answers. So everybody has to find their little groove, their little niche of what they like to do. So anyway. Alright, we got about uh, 25 miles until we get to Indiana. And then uh, once we get to Indiana, we're going to run over to Crawfordsville and then shoot up north on 231. So I'll see you when we get to Lafayette. Alright, we made it over here to uh, Lafayette, Indiana. We're at our top secret location. We're waiting to unload in the morning. I thought there'd be uh, another truck or two here, but there's not. We already checked in with security. So our appointment's at six o'clock in the morning. It is, oh here, I'll turn you around. You can see what's going on. It's uh, nasty and muddy outside. And I have to untarp. So, I don't know, because the way it works here is you check in, and this is like a staging area, and then usually where this stuff delivers to is a couple blocks away. So, I can't remember if they want it on tarp before you go deliver it or not. So, I'll wake up early in the morning, and get out there, go ask somebody if they want it on tarp, figure it out. But we're pretty well set up oh here comes another truck coming in here we'll see what he does hang on all right that other guy got checked in let's see where he goes here i'll pan you around you can see i have to look through the rain in the window let's see where he goes he might have like a drop and hook load Yeah, he's got a drop in hook load. So, all right, I guess we'll just sit here and wait. Uh, we'll fire up the generator, get the heater going, watch some TV, and hit it hard this week coming up. Hopefully uh, everything will start falling in place. Uh, once these places start getting back in the groove after the Thanksgiving weekend, should do it pretty good so all right that's it talk to you later thanks for watching